are for real. Let's do it. Okay. Round number two. Welcome, Dr. Noah Leibowitz to the show. Dr. Noah Leibowitz and his father own Supreme Nutrition Products, which I've been talking about on my YouTube channel and on my website. And, and when I work with clients, I talk to them about these products all the time because they are the most badass products in town. And uh, yeah, so Dr. Leibowitz, uh, thank you for coming on the show. I'm excited to talk to you about your personal life, about the, the company, about your products, and uh, would love to hear your 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 story of how you got uh involved in, in in this world of health and detox in the first place yeah no thanks for having me i'm really excited to be here um i was kind of grown it i guess grown up in this world my dad's been doing the work that i'm doing now since at least 1980 if not longer so close to 40 years um it's what got me interested in the first place i'm a chiropractor by license but i do a lot of nutritional work with clients basically if people come to me for depression for anxiety for gi issues for fungal and candida issues for lyme all of those types of things i get a lot of patients coming in from locally but also all over the country um, most of the people that come and see us i mean they've already seen the functional med docs a lot of them have seen anywhere from 10 to have one guy i'm working with right now that's seen 102 different doctors um they come in with thousands of dollars worth of lab work and we try to take a step back and see what are the big stressors on the body i mean you can have lab work and you can treat it out the wazoo but it doesn't always work so if we found that, you know, if you find food sensitivities, people are having reactions to even quote unquote healthy foods. If we find the microbial infections people are sensitive to, if we detox them off chemicals, detox them with heavy metals, address all those things, we can really get some good results with people. And that's kind of what we've always been focused on. Mm. So what kind of, how does the intro phase of your protocol work? Do you, do you guys work on gut healing? Do you work on like, I know you guys must do lectin avoidance diets, right? If, if you're having a, the lectin protect supplement on the market. Yeah. It, lectin protect's been awesome. It really has made a huge difference in some people. Um, I mean, the one thing that I go with is no one person, there's no one diet for everyone, mm -hmm. you know? There's some key principles we should all follow. We shouldn't be doing sugar. We shouldn't be doing refined carbs, those types of things. But I mean, I know some people where gluten is perfectly healthy. I know other people that dairy is perfectly healthy. I know some people that caffeine's fine, but I know other people that those completely crash them. So every person gets an individual, individualistic diet. Um, lectins, like you mentioned, those have been huge coming from the work of Dr. Gundry. Um, my dad and I just started incorporating them in our practice last year. And I mean, doing that, some of our chronic patients has been huge. We had one guy with the disc balls and, and avoiding lectins. All of his pains went away when he tried all different types of therapies. We've had people with Asperger's and different symptoms or neurologically symptoms have gone away. We've had people that are food sensitive and avoiding the lectins has greatly helped heal their gut. But that's not somewhere we jump right away with people because, you know, like I said, we put people on pretty strict diets and I try to just avoid the foods that we need to and then we work from there. Um, but that can be huge. You know, lectin, I mean, with lectin protect, it's an awesome product. It helps bind them in the gut. A friend of my dad's, he loves it because now he said he can eat gluten and he only has about a 10% reaction while before is out of 10. Yeah. Not why we designed the product in the first place, but for some people, they want that cheat on occasion and it works great for that. Well, my personal story is that I had a pizza a few weeks ago, uh, celebrating with some friends, and I had digestive enzymes, digestive bitters, and lectin protect, and I didn't have any reaction. So it's the, the just for the fans to know, there's bladder rack, okra, and larch, right? Are those the three? Yes. Yeah, and, those are very sticky substances that just bind the lectins in the gut. Yep. And, you know, I've been talking about these lectins. Check out Dr. Gundry. He talks about these anti-nutrients that basically create havoc in the intestines and havoc for the immune system. And these green, they're all green, right? Uh, okra is green and uh, larch is not green, right? Right. Not uh, so okay. So it's not a greens supplement, but they end up uh, binding to the lectins. So, um, yeah, what kind of diet do you have? Like you said, it was a strict diet. What, what do you have a lot of people on or... or it's different for everybody, yeah. Everyone gets a different type of diet. The big it, it's thing based is, on muscle testing. That's where we, we yeah. do all types of muscle testing in our okay. practice. That's kind of where everything comes back to. The big things I take people off are gluten, dairy, caffeine, and chocolate. Which I mean, that's one thing is promoted as a health superfood nowadays and everything. I've seen so many people where their symptoms have gone away when going off caffeine or chocolate. GI issues are huge, musculoskeletal arthritis, all of those. I mean, 
my dad always says coffee and chocolate, yeah, yeah they have a lot of antioxidants in, but so does heroin. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has good stuff, but it has yeah. a lot of bad stuff too. And if you go to a health food store 30 years ago, they weren't even allowed in there. So some people do fine, but so many other people, it's just a liver stress and adrenal stress that doesn't do well. Also, nightshades are a huge one. So your tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, paprika, tobacco, goji berries, ashwagandha, all of those and some people, any type of autoimmune disorder, GI, musculoskeletal pain. If I do too many nightshades, I get really dry patches on my skin. Or my dad went, his right hip, he could only move from here to here. After going off nightshades for six weeks, he got full 90 degree rotation. So they can be huge in some people. I mean, those are kind of the big foods that a lot of people show up on. I mean, other people show up on eggs. Some people show up on beef or chicken. I hate taking people off those. Those are staples in my diet. Yeah, but eggs as well. Eggs and some people yeah. definitely have been huge. And, you know, the thing is, too, different people do well on different styles of diets. Like, I know some people that do better at paleo. I know other people that do better at keto. And then I know other people that do well vegan. I mean, it kind of depends. I think, I don't know if it's your gut biome based off your life's history or your ancestors, mm. but there's different diets that work well for different people. And I think also those needs can change throughout life depending on what's going on. Totally. Totally. So well said. Do you actually think that the vegan diet is, is like, I understand it could be making someone feel better, but do you actually feel like it's sustainable? Like won't that individual eventually after five or 10 years, not have enough cholesterol, not be able to build hormones and eventually be, have to go, you know, take off a vegan diet? Or do you actually think that it could be sustainable? You know, I think it depends on an individualistic basic okay. um, basis. I think if you're extremely, extremely good about it. I mean, I know vegetarians hate vegetables. Those people are going to be the six people you ever meet. Right, right. And a lot of the people out there. But if you have people that do a lot of beans that are pressure cooked to lower the lectins, you do avocado, you do coconut, you do different things like that, I think they can do very well for long periods of time. I don't think everyone can, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't follow that lifestyle. My mom was vegetarian for 20-some years. And she was getting sick a lot, so she actually had to start eating red meat, and then she does a lot better on it. Mm. So I think it does depend on the person. But, you know, I think balance. I think a lot of people do too much meat, probably myself included. So I think, you know, veggies should be the main base of your diet. But, you know, adding some beef in and different things, that's why a lot of keto diets, I see them work great at first. But then a lot of the times people will crash, just they're not getting any carbs in, which – we all do way too many carbs, but we shouldn't go to the opposite extreme either and do none, I don't think. So it's kind of finding that balance of people. Yeah, with the keto diet, I've seen people, uh, their gut, their microbiome collapses because they're not getting any of the feeding, you know, the food for the probiotics, for, for the bacteria. They're not able to get any of the, the good food or the, the prebiotic fibers. So I've definitely seen that. Um, yeah, one one diet for all is definitely not possible. I just... I somehow just, the one thing I don't understand is how people are vegans for their whole life, but I guess it's just, it really is, we're all just unique. There's just, and and actually I get a lot of shit on my channel for for people who are like, I can't believe you eat, still eat meat. You're supposed to be about detox, you know, but uh, I think it's just so needed to to balance the body and and ground on this earth. And and, uh, for me, it, it does something for me energetically. That allows me to be more solid in my body, you know? I agree with yeah. that. I mean, I've heard different styles in my life. I've gone some, like, for probably a year or two. I was probably eating, like, four pounds of beef a week, I would guess. Wow. And I've gone other spots where I'm probably having meat, like, once a week. So I think, you know, definitely depending on your needs, your activity, where you're leaving, stress levels, your diets can vary a little bit depending yeah. on what's going on. Yeah, totally. Cool. So, uh... <laughs> All right, so your, your your father, you and your father created this company, Supreme Nutrition, right? And this is, is do you guys kind of, uh, do you kind of, is that your main remedy for people, clients who come to you? Or do you have, do you feel like you have every tool in the arsenal on your products alone? Or do you feel like you have to outsource and, and use some other products there? It's a good question. So yeah. Nutrition was founded by my dad, another friend, um, almost 15 years ago, somewhere around there now. And my dad's always been in search of helping people in different things. And he's always seen, you know, getting the highest quality supplements because people are a lot sicker now than they used to be. And that's kind of what happened with Supreme Nutrition in the first place. Um, with a lot of our products, we get 
you know, comments of, oh, I tried this before, before and it never worked. And then I tried yours and it worked great. Mm -hmm. Why? And, you know, like an example I like to give, like, let's say ashwagandha. That's what we get from people all the time. And when we get products in, whenever we come out with a product, and then also every time we come out with a new batch of a product, we muscle test the raw materials. And it's amazing. It's like we get two or three samples from all different parts of the world. On paper, they're good. They pass your COAs for microbes, for heavy metals. They're all organic or wild harvested. So they look good on paper. So in a typical company, you buy the cheapest one. It just makes sense. It's mm -hmm. organic. Here's where you get it from. But then we'll actually test it on our patients and see, okay, which one actually tests best on people before we use it. And that's a big reason I think we've had good success with a lot of our products when other people haven't. Also, we never do any isolates since, you know, if you take out one active component, you're losing other components. And then also with our products, we've never added any fillers or binders or anything like that. They're pure. And a lot of times people might just react to the binders and not the other thing. But then I'm mean, coming back to what you said. I mean, I'm more, in a lot of ways, I'm kind of a less is more. I'm not a person that has people take 20 supplements or anything like that. Most of my clients, I give three to five. Um, you know, I say that I gave someone seven this morning, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's kind of the average. Yeah. And generally, Supreme is a majority of our standpoint. For microbial issues, it is awesome. For detoxing, for different things like that, I'm probably 80% of the supplements I use are from Supreme Nutrition. But then also, I mean, I use a couple herbs here and there that either we just we don't have out since I know there's some other good quality sources, but mainly for herbs, for antimicrobials and stuff, detox, that's what I use. And then we use some occasional vitamins, minerals, you know, different things like that from other companies. Um, and we like to eat those, we like to be as natural as possible. And I mean, it's kind of crazy if you look at how a lot of the different products, where they come from, you know, they're not just this natural vitamin, you know, they're derived from, I think vitamin D comes from sheepskin or, you know, all these different things. They have to use solvents and all different types of chemicals to get it down there. So we like to trade, stay as natural as possible, but then we do have to supplement with different vitamins or minerals, depending on what the person needs. Mm. Can we talk about muscle testing? Like what exactly is, I, I've had it done once and honestly, I don't know if the guy was, was the real deal. Um, obviously you guys are, I would love to hear about, uh, applied kinesiology. Yeah. It's, it's basically muscle testing, right? Yeah. So I mean, applied yeah. kinesiology started with Dr. Goodhart back in the sixties. He was the first, uh, um, chiropractor for the Olympics. Awesome doc. And that's where everything's kind of come from. There's a lot of different types of muscle testing out there. Some of it's very physiological, some of it's not very physiological. Either one can get good results depending on the practitioner. We try to keep things as scientific as possible. The simplest explanation is we're seeing how your body neurologically responds when exposed to a substance. And we do that via checking muscle strength. So if you have something, if you're exposed to a food that you're allergic to, it's going to send bad signals to the brain and that's going to shut off different pathway, neuronal pathways and that'll cause a weakening versus if you have a weak or inhibited muscle, if you're exposed to something good, then it's going to cause strengthening, showing that your body needs it. And that's something I tell clients. I mean, you know, if you go into Whole Foods and look at parasite supplements, I mean, you probably have 20 on the shelf. And We're I'm sure each one is yeah. for <laughs> at least one person, yeah. but so many people, they don't work for them. Why? And so with the supplements, I mean, you know, I have 20 different antimicrobials in my test kit maybe. How do I know which one is best for you? I mean, I have three that I use, Mirinda, Golden Thread, and Malia. I mean, those are three that I use so much, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, I worked with the doc in Arizona. He ordered 120 at a time of each of those just because he went through them so much with clients. But that doesn't mean they work for everyone. Right. You know, if you say that, you're wrong. So we muscle test and see, okay, this is going to be what's actually good for you. This is what your body wants. And for me to give you something, the muscle testing, it lets me take out the guesswork. And it's cool because it lets me figure out not only what's going to work for the problem, but also what's good for you. Mm. I mean, the cheesy explanation I give is like, you know, I could give you something like mercury. Mercury is going to kill all the bad microbes in your body, but it's also going to kill you. Yeah. So we want to do that. Or I could give you something like blueberries. I mean, blueberries are an awesome superfood. They're going to be good for your body. But are they really going to kill a fungus? Probably not. 
So I want to give something that is not only good for your body so you don't have a bad reaction to it, but also it's going to do the intended result if that's killing off microbes or if that's supporting the liver or adrenals or anything along those lines. Mm, very cool. So you're having – where are you placing the actual food and, and, and is it in a vial or is it uh, the supplement of it? Um, and then what do you do? You, it's, an arm, it's an arm test, right? So you're testing the strength of the arm. Doing an arm test. How originally started was applying substances onto the tongue, okay. and, which works great, but you're limited because certain things like mercury, you can't really put that in someone's tongue. You're going to have a lot of issues. Yeah, but you that. can just put it in their teeth six inches from their brain. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, just, I don't yeah, care, so. Yeah, yeah. so we actually do all of our testing. I can't find it at the moment. We hold our vials under a magnet. Okay. There's a lot of research that was originally done by William Philpott, who was a medical doctor, clinical ecologist, and... We doing some based off his research. We found we can test substances under the south pole of a magnet over a couple of very sensitive acupuncture points. We usually do our testing over GV20, governing vessel 20, which is the high point of the head, and we found that that finds the most overall results on people. Like checking over, checking over different parts of the body isn't all equal. We found if we check over this one spot, um, or also GV27, we found a lot extra results. So that's typically where we do our testing over using a magnet. And then, you know, for our, like, the Supreme Nutrition other supplements, like here's Kamo. It's basically just I keep a little bit of powder in a jar. It makes mm. it easy to test. And then I also have a test kit with different foods and microbes and different things like that. And that's how we do our evaluation for stressors on the body, mm. testing in the same manner. Very cool. I want to ask a question that popped up again. I forgot to ask it before, but uh, ashwagandha as a nightshade is interesting. I've been taking ashwagandha at night. Do, is there a way, like in an alcohol tincture, the lectins are going to, or, or the, 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 the reason you wouldn't take nightshades uh, is, is not because of the lectins. It's for something else, right? It causes an immune response. The alpha solamine. It's okay. A and that comes out in alcohol, right? That stays in the alcohol tinctures. There's debate. I don't think it truly actually would. Um, you know, I know there's – I can't say for sure. Okay. If it does completely. Yeah. Okay. So I was just curious. I've been – I'm really curious to – because I, I just had a client uh, two days ago and told me that coming off all nightshades, including ashwagandha, changed his life. I'm really curious if ashwagandha – is affecting my health. I mean, I feel great, but I'm, I, there's always levels, uh, you know, higher. So totally. And I mean, with ashwagandha, yeah. two things. I mean, one, you're getting a low dose. If someone shows up as nightshade sensitive, I don't give it to them. About. Okay. But I mean, you have a lot of people that aren't nightshade sensitive. That's one thing you can think about. Uh -huh. But then also, in addition to that, is so I've seen a lot of patients that actually handle ashwagandha well that don't handle other nightshades. Maybe the good outweighs the bad. Mm. Um, one thing with tinctures, which is why, I mean, I use tinctures on occasion. I have an eight-month-old. I've given them some tinctures, stuff like that. But we try not to use a lot of them because, one, it is an extract. You're just pulling out certain parts. But then also, alcohol is big liver stress in all honesty. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people have more alcohol from other things than their tinctures. But it still is a liver stress. So if you have a fungal or candida issue, if you have heavy metals or chemicals, your liver is going to be overstressed. And if you take a tincture, it's just going to be an extra stress on the liver. And another thing I learned when actually touring a supplement company, if you get a tincture and it's not organic, they're probably using GMO corn ethanol yeah, yeah. to make it in the first place. So you got to yeah. be careful on that. Definitely. Definitely. Interesting. Maybe I'll give it a couple of weeks of no ashwagandha to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of adrenal herbs that ideal is you don't have to take them forever. So like for myself, I mean, we have three adrenal herbs, ashwagandha, endo, and talsi. I mean, ashwagandha is the most common one that people use by far. For my brother, endos worked awesome. For mm -hmm. myself, I was in chiropractic school, stressed out, on caffeine, needed to get off. So I started taking Talsi, and I was taking like four or five pills a day for about three months. I felt amazing when I took it, and eventually I didn't need it anymore. Okay. Because, you know, if you live a high-stress life, you're going to have a lot of stress in your adrenal glands. But if you can sleep a decent amount, if you can make time to exercise, if you can, you know, relax and stuff like that, you should be able to heal your adrenal glands and you don't have to stay on supplements forever. And that's kind of always my goal. Mm, definitely. Yeah. There's always that question when people start the detox journey of like, you know, how long am I going to have to take these things for, you know? And I always say, look, don't worry about that now. Get healthier first, then worry about coming off of things. Because when you're, when you feel well, 
and your life isn't in shambles, it's easy to come off of a supplement. You know, it's not like a whole ordeal. But yeah, I feel like I'm probably going to take things for the rest of my life just because I'm like one big experiment in this body. But yeah, ideally, I wouldn't be taking supplements. I, I, re I go through phases. Sometimes I go weeks without it. And ironically, I always feel better when I'm not taking anything. But that's just because I'm constantly detoxing that when I take a break from it, it's like the first time my body gets a rest and like, okay, time to feel the reward of the past year of work, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know I go through spurts too. Like there's days where I take one or two things pretty basic. Yeah. And then other times I'm just not taking anything for a week. I feel like my body needs a break. And then, I mean, my dad and I are researchers. We like to find out new things. So for the past month, I was actually just taking a new herb, Vidanga, which Supreme's going to release in sometime this week. What is it called? Vidanga. Vidanga. I've it, never heard of it. Vidanga. I mean, so right now, mimosa has all the anti-parasitic, yeah. you know, everyone's talking about mimosa. I mean, we have a mimosa product. I use it. It's a great product. Vidanga, I think, is even going to be better for any type of helmet or worm type issues. Wow. So people that have worms, which is kind of a scary thought, I think Vidanga is going to be the best herb there is at least that I've ever researched for it but also it helps with different methylation issues so due to all kinds of fun genetics I have a little bit higher homocysteine levels than I should normally and that's kind of like a heart cardiac risk and so genetically people might take certain B vitamins or different things like that when I take those B vitamins I get a headache so I don't take them so I just did an experiment with blood work and I was taking the Vidanga twice a day for the past um three or four weeks and my homocysteine levels dropped about 15 percent taking it so pretty good it dropped a couple points so i'm actually in a good range right now so it's cool it does a couple different things anti-parasitic but also more methylation cholesterol different things like that it helps balance wow very cool when is that coming out um hopefully within the next week amazing amazing so, i'm really excited for that one it's gonna be a big product yeah Okay, so let's circle back to the antiparasitics. You guys have Noni, which I've used. Uh, you got, which is called Mirinda. You guys yep. have Alaria, which is uh, no, not Alaria. Um, what's Malia. Neem? Malia's Neem. Malia, yeah, and uh, Mimosa. And do you have a fourth one, Golden? Uh, I mean, another fourth big one I would say is Golden Thread, which is okay. Coptus. Okay. Yeah, I, it's the only one I haven't used of those. And uh, to me, I feel like they do a really good job of slowly and effectively killing the bugs. You know, a lot of people want to tackle the bugs in 30 days and get rid of their parasites in 30 days. And I just feel like that collapses most, people help, most people's health. I totally uh, am all about the slow marathon approach with phases of intensity. In my, from what I do, at least, is just I, I give people phases of intensity. But... What I have people on, and I've had them on for a long time, for since I found out about your products, is as a maintenance dose to keep the bugs at bay while they're not doing those intense phases are things like the neem and the noni, things that just gently and slowly uh, heal and, and, and help restore the, the harmony to the gut and you know keep the bad bugs at bay. So yeah. Um, I would love to, if you had any words on those four herbs or any interesting facts or anything, I would love to hear about it. And we can go through kind of every category of herbs that you guys have, you know? Yeah, I mean, like for antimicrobials, I mean, we have lots of other antimicrobials. I mean, we have Vital Guard, which is chrysanthemum flowers. We have Woad, which is like sat, it's good fungal and also antiviral. We have Scutellaria, which is good anti candida, especially. Elysium, that's my favorite, absolute favorite thing during flu season. That's where actually okay. Tamiflu comes from. And when any person calls me up and says, oh, I think I've come down with the flu, I tell them to take like eight scoops of Kamu a day and like up to nine pills of Elysium. And I've had like four or five patients this year that knocked out the flu in one to two days. Wow. Like it was awesome for that. But, you know, with that being said, I mean, the four, and I also have olive leaf and a couple others, but I mean, the four biggest antimicrobials, um, at least the three different, Mirinda, Malia, and Golden Thread. I mean, okay. the nice thing about all of those is they're very broad spectrum. You know, they work well. There's a lot of research, and we have them all on our website going how they work for parasites, for viruses, for fungal and candida infections, you know, Lyme, different things like that. They're very broad spectrum. Um, and you have to be careful with the sources. Like a lot of noni actually comes from Hawaii, which, I mean, my parents live in Hawaii. I think Hawaii, beautiful, pristine. But a lot of the nonis grown south side of the big island where all the heavy metals come up to the volcano, settles in the soil, and we don't find the... Um, Noni from the Big Island to test well because of that. 
So it's tough to find a good source, or if you get the juice, a lot of times either fermented or stuff tastes horrible. Yeah, so it's I mean, oxidized. It's like, yeah. Yeah. They dilute it with a bunch of other fruit juices, which then you're adding all the sugar and different stuff. Yep. So, I mean, Mirinda is one of the big ones that I use a lot of. I think Malia, which is neem leaf, like you mentioned, that's, I think, we always look at that as probably our strongest product. Okay. And, you know, it's our strongest one for a lot of ways. It's kind of our go-to for a lot of tough cases, works well. Golden Thread is my personal favorite. I don't know why. We always have our own personal favorite stuff. You know, it's yeah. always worked well for me. If I ever get a sore throat, I open up a capsule and gargle with it. Again, it does not taste good, but it always knocks out the sore throat. So, I mean, those are kind of some of the big ones that we use most often, I would say. And then, yeah, the mimosa, um, we've been using that for a year and a half, two years. And it works well for parasites, but it also works well for other things. That's the nice thing about herbs is, you know, you look at the research. They're not just like an antibiotic. You know, it's not a food consult. It's just antifungal. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a lot of research showing how they work for so many different factors, which is kind of cool. Yeah. The mimosa is interesting. In Chinese medicine, they used to prescribe it as uh, as like a spiritual cleanse, like an uplifting cleanse. It's ironic that that a spiritual cleanse is actually killing parasites, right? It makes us it makes us think like, wow, parasites can contri really contribute to this, you know, spiritual sickness that a lot of people have. And and the neem, do you guys use neem? Uh, do you guys use the seed or only the leaf? Use the leaf. The leaf. The seed is like not for internal use, even though I've used a, sh a shitload for internal use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to be careful with different parts of the plant. Um, yeah, we just use the leaf. Okay. Okay. The neem seed oil, I've read about like tribes in Africa using it as like a um, birth control and uh, like abortion, yeah. you know? I've heard about that too. I mean, I've had neem essential oil before. I've tried to put on some cuts and scrapes and everything. I don't know why it always smells like rotten Chinese food to me. I just yeah. can't. I don't know. It's one of those scents that I just cannot do personally. It's funny that scent to me feels like home. Like whenever I, <laughs> whenever I smell neem seed oil, I'm like, wow, something like something about it. Like there's two things that when I taste or smell, it's like it takes me like it, it, it's like ingrained in my DNA, and I feel like I remember it from some past life or something. And uh, it's neem seed and it's uh, shilajit. I don't know if you've ever had raw shilajit, but it definitely like makes me feel like I'm at home. Yeah. Mixture, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So is there another class of supplements that you guys have or should we just start moving down the list? I would love to. The, I just want to say before we move forward, I just want to say my personal favorites have been Mirinda. They've been um, Makuna, the Makuna that I've used from you guys, which uh, it, even though I've used a lower dose compared to the competitors, it's always worked better for me than, than Banyan Botanicals, even though Banyan Botanicals is a pretty good company. Um, and uh, what else do I love? Um, Takasumi Supreme, I've been recommending that for like a year and a half already. Um, bamboo Charcoal, for all of you guys who don't know. And Lectin Protect is badass. I totally, whatever, if I have Lectin Protect, no matter, almost no matter what I eat, there's very little to no inflammation, you know, even if it's if it's not the right food for me. So, um, uh, Kamu Kamu, I've used that. So those are probably my favorite. If I looked at the list, I'd probably be able to rattle some more off that I've used for extended periods of time. But but would love to hear uh, moving down the list of, of what else you guys have to offer. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, the many, the overall categories I would say is you have the antimicrobials, which I mean the ones maybe you know all herbs have some antimicrobial properties. But probably the couple I didn't necessarily mention. I mean, olive leaf's one. Um, I'm just looking at the list of what we have. Sure, sure, totally. <laughs> BFP yeah. and BFP, uh, um, BFP2, yeah. those stand for biofilm buster. And so biofilm is where the kind of microbes can hide out in the body. And there's essential oils, which is cool. There's a lot of research how essential oils are not only biofilm degrading, but they're antimicrobial. So that's why we have people apply those topically. And first we thought, applying essential oils topically, this is actually going to cause me, you know, benefit and we've had some huge dramatic cases in certain people it's worked really well um those are some of the big ones i mean others we have detox you know it's so like you mentioned takasumi i mean takasumi is one of our biggest products by far mm -hmm. it's carbonized bamboo similar kind of to charcoal but different process in how it's made made from bamboo it's about 10 times more absorbent the cool thing is i mean 
we have people take it. It's an awesome detoxer. You know, it helps to bind chemicals, it helps to bind die off, it helps to bind metals, different things like that, and helps to detox the body. So, Takasumi is a really great product that you know a lot of people are really happy with. Um, works really well. I'm just going to interrupt you every once in a while. I hope you don't mind. But bamboo charcoal. Is it true that in Japan they use that at McDonald's or Burger King to, to reduce gluten sensitivity in the bread? That's what I heard. I, they do put it in some of their breads to make a black bun. Okay. So in certain spots, they do use certain types for coloring agents. Okay. But um, I'm not sure if it's actually reduced. I mean, so my brother, he has actually baked different types of breads and added Takasumi to it. And that's actually helped lessen the reaction that some people have to gluten. So for some people, it can work. But I'm not sure if that's why they use it. I think it's more of a coloring agent. Okay. 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 Um, I mean, Toxumi is one of our biggest products, great detox for a lot of Lyme doctors are using it for detox, different things like that. Works great. And I mean, we've had people take it for months and months and it doesn't seem, at least as far as we can tell, to deplete the body of any nutrients. Like I said, you know, we've had some people take it for fairly long term. I've taken it two or five, usually I do like two scoops a day or three pills, but like I've had food poison a couple of times and taken like 10 scoops just to kind of bind up everything. Yep. It's great. I mean, also for detox in a sense, um, you have schizandra. Schizandra is an awesome mm. herb. It's tiny, it's technically a berry. I love it because it's two things. I mean, one, there's research to antimicrobial, antifungal, but it's probably the best liver herb that I know. I think it works better than milk. This are all different types of things for really supporting the liver. It's one of my favorites. And then kind of a newer product too that we have, it's called Glyphoex, which it was kind of designed initially to help people detox or help protect against glyphosate or Roundup issues. Um, there's some research how some of the ingredients in um, one study showed how they protected against liver cell death caused by glyphosate, which is the main ingredient in Roundup. But it's also just a very good, it has burdock, it has dandelion, it has basil. It's a great overall detoxer. So I'm actually a big fan of that. A uh, doctor I know down in Florida, she's been using it with a lot of her clients that have been affected by mosquito spraying in the area. Mm. Definitely, you know, talk to me. Those are all kind of big detoxers. Um, we have one other product, Smilax. Smilax is sarsaparilla. Okay, it's, it's a blood it's, cleanser, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so it does a lot of things, but one yeah. thing, it's shown to be an endotoxin binder. So if you look at the research, it binds endotoxins, but also it helps bind mycotoxins, which are basically like mold produced by mold. It helps to bind those and pull them out. Um, I usually don't see mycotoxins as like a huge key part of the body, but in some people it works well, and it is just a general binder too. Mm. So that's another good at the whole detox category in a sense. Um, and I mean, those are a lot of the thinking, you know, we have some other more like, you know, in a sense, like I mentioned with vitamins and minerals, yeah. I use them. I mean, I use a lot of magnesium in my practice. I use different vitamins and minerals, but I rarely use multivitamins. I mean, I'd rather people get their nutrients from their food even though our nutrient supply in our food isn't as good as it should be. I mean, if you can really clear up the gut, I think if you eat a very good whole balanced diet, organic food and stuff, you can get enough nutrients from that, but some people don't. So we have two products, Thera and Wild Greens. Yeah, Wild, Wild Greens. Greens is amazing. Really yeah. amazing. I've been, I almost finished uh, that bottle that I just got from you the other week. Yeah. Why, yeah. We found so many of the green supplements. I have so many people bring them into me and like 99% of the time I take them all. Most of them have wheatgrass, they have alpha, they have chlorella, they have spirulina. And I found a lot of those products don't do well with people. I and mean, chlorella sometimes does. Spirulina, some people feel good, but it actually can have a lot of excitotoxins in it sometimes, or even heavy metals, depending where it's produced. It's a lot of it comes from the big island of Hawaii again. Um, and then alfalfa and barley, I don't know why, but I mean, they have a lot of good nutrient profile. But I've had so many people where I take them off and their allergies get way better. They just don't do well with many people, and that's why Wild Greens is more of a hypoallergenic greens drink. It does not taste the best because we don't add anything to it. Yeah. But you mix it in water, and it's really good. It helps detox. Um, I have a patient right now taking it to help her balance chemical exposure, and then Thera is kind of the same thing. It's a detox. It has a black radish and some other things like that, but it's also just a very high nutrient. It's kind of like a multivitamin for nature in a sense. That's mm. how I like to look at them. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And uh, the, the greens that you have in wild greens, the, I imagine they are actually wild. They're not farmed. They're not domesticated, right? They're the dandelion and chi chickweed. Is it dandelion? Chickweed and uh, Siberian miner's lettuce. There's a few different ones. I, have, okay. I forget which ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's what, you know, 
a lot of our products, people ask like, oh, is this organic or where does this come from? Yeah. I mean, we don't label our products as organic. Most of them are organic, but you know, two things. One, we get multiple samples and we test. So it might not always be from the same farm, but a lot of our products are wild harvested. And I mean, I would always rather have a wild totally. harvested plant than something that's farmed organic because organic can still be sprayed. And, you know, depending on the standards, I read something recently about a lot of the organic stuff from China being falsified paperwork and, you know, a lot of different things. So the wild harvested, I think, is actually better. And totally. we always try for those if possible. Totally. People don't understand that even if a farm is organic, the soil never gets a chance to rest. So the, the, the earthly law is that you have to let land rest in order for it to replenish nutrients. And most of the farms, unless they're really a farm with integrity, like a small family operation, most of the farms are, are you know, just beating up their land for the sake of profits because the whole industry as a whole is taking a hit right now. People also don't realize that when you have a plant in the wild, it's grown in an ecosystem, like, like in, almost like an immune system where there's plants that grow around it that are specifically designed to protect it and help it. And it's like, you know, everything gives and receives in nature. So totally wild, wild foraging, you know, wild gathering, wild plants and greens from the earth uh, in a natural state is definitely going to be the best. Do, do you, where do you guys get the, um, the, the plants that are in the wild greens? Do you have any like specific locations or all around the world or? Wild greens a lot of those are actually from the Pacific Northwest. I okay. Guess. I mean, that one we've been lucky. We've been very kind of specific with the general area. Yeah. But a lot of some of our products, I mean, you know, a lot of times they might come from the same spot because we found an awesome supplier. They were really high integrity and that's what we stick with. But sometimes, you know, we get a batch from the place we always get it from. We get a sample and it just doesn't test well. We've run out of products a couple times because of that. And just because we only will make a new batch if you find something that looks good on paper but also muscle tests really well right and so that's why we get different samples and stuff and, you know sometimes it might come from different country or even different co continent and you know that's you know you have a lot of companies that might be specific in chinese or specific in ayurvedic or different things and we've kind of tried to combine a lot of the ones that have really good research and ones that we can find that clinically work you know we're not going to come out with a product that looks good on paper and it doesn't work for people. Mm -hmm. That's why we try to have ones that do both. And then we just keep looking for best sources. And, you know, sometimes we even find better sources and then we change them around. So, yeah, very cool. I want to bring up uh, Alaria Japonica. That's the Alaria Supreme. So that's basically just kelp. Yeah. But it's a very, it's a kelp from a very specific part of the world, right? Well, it's a specific, I mean, kelp is a different type of seaweed. There's okay. many different types of seaweed, just like, you know, in wild greens, there's multiple different types of lettuce in a sense. Mm -hmm. So this just kelp, it's from Elaria esculeta, I believe is the Latin. And that's a very specific type of seaweed. And it's wild harvested up from Canada. We okay. find they have some of the best qualities. There's a lot of different seaweeds out there we find really high in heavy metals. I mean, if you just look at the fish out there and how polluted our oceans are. Yeah. So it's one that we get and it's a very high quality wild harvested. And then it's a, I almost look at that as kind of Similar to like wild greens and there, it's kind of like a high trace mineral. You know, it has a lot of different minerals in and different stuff. And um, so it's just a very specific type of seaweed that we have found to be low in heavy metals and very high nutrient. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I've been taking that for a while. And I, especially I take it, I found out a kind of a loophole, Not, I guess not really because it still didn't sit well with me. But I, I had this recent craving for seafood, you know, and I, I had severe mercury poisoning for three and a half years. I almost died. It was absolute torture. And, and for me, seafood has just been on this like the devil, you know, like I'm not touching it. But I ended up giving it a try recently again, and I just loved it. So I bought like 10, uh, 10 things of... Uh, uh, it was mackerel and it was the, I don't know if you've ever seen those bags of mackerel. It's like the main mackerel, smoked mackerel in a bag from at Whole Foods. I've seen some different, yeah. Okay. So well, it's like something, the name of the company is like something of Maine and they have trout and they have mackerel. And anyway, I, after I ate, I ate one, I was like, I need these. And I bought 10 of them and I ate one, I ate one fish every day for 10 days, but I took three to four Alaria Supremes with eat with it each time and it definitely reduced the feeling uh, like when i have something with mercury i actually it, i feel it immediately in my muscles 
I feel this ache in my muscles after I eat it. So uh, it did replace that, but or or help that. But what do you think about seafood? And do you think the kelp or the the Alaria Supreme is going to be able to bind to all of the toxins and the metals in the seafood? With Alaria, I definitely you know I look at it as a gentle detoxer. That's mm -hmm. kind of how I kind of look at it. Um, well, Takasumi, I look as stronger in the sense. You know, a lot of people that like to use a binder for heavy metals, Takasumi is kind of like that. Think that is definitely a stronger option. With seafood, it honestly depends on the person. I mean, for people with, you know, so if you look, well, if you look at fish, I mean, things like you get wild um, sardines from Canada. You know, obviously the smaller the fish, the better. Mm -hmm. so something like sardines or even anchovies, I think those can be really good. The bigger the fish, you know, I mean, salmon is not pretty, is pretty good, but they've even started to find mercury in wild Alaskan salmon. Mm -hmm. So I think there's minute amounts of mercury in all fish. It just depends how much is in there. So for your really, for your people with a lot of heavy metal issues, I find that they actually do best on zero seafood, yep. even the tough stuff. You know, but then for your person that doesn't really have mercury or other heavy metal issues, I think, see, you know, different types of seafood can be very good. Usually I recommend sticking to things like, you know, wild um, Alaska Canadian sardines. If you can find some good quality mackerel, I love that stuff black cod from Alaska. Um, you know, I think a lot of the Alaskan or Canadian stuff is some of the best quality right now. I mean, at least that's easy to find. Maybe you can find some New Zealand or different stuff like that. But we usually like to stick to the cold, clean climates. And, you know, yeah, I think Alaria can work well as kind of like a gentle detoxer. But then the toxin might look as a stronger detoxer. So it kind of depends on what's going on with that. Would you suggest taking the takasumi with fish? Have you ever done that? personally haven't because I haven't had yeah. any heavy metal issues, thank yeah. you, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I know some people that have, so for my, I, I know a couple of people that had a lot of heavy metal issues and they've done all different types of um, detoxification, DMSA, alpha-lipoic acid, different things like that, and they still couldn't do seafood, but then after doing Takasumi, they were able to add in seafood without having bad reactions. Okay. I also know a couple of people that had a lot of reactions, some kind of mercury related to different seafood, and they found that actually once they cut lectins out of their diet and you know lectin checked to heal the gut, then they were actually able to eat seafood also and not have the reactions. So it was interesting. I think that was more of a gut healing thing. I don't know if it was just less leaky, so different metals were being absorbed. Mm -hmm. But I know a couple of people where it made a huge difference where they couldn't do fish for years, and then after going lectin free they were able to add it in and do great. Interesting. Do you have a company of fish? And this is this is a, a question for me. Screw my audience. Do you have a company of fish that you eat for sardines, that you, like Alaskan sardines? Um, I don't remember the names, in okay. all honesty. I usually either go Whole Foods and look for the wild-caught Canadian. Okay. Or Leaf Crater Joe's actually has a pretty good wild-caught Canadian sardines and kipper snacks, smoky okay. kippers. Okay. Um, I don't exactly look at Trader Joe's as a health food store, but they right. do have some really good quality fish. I think they even have some good anchovies there. Okay. And then Whole Foods, both of those. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So let's see. We got about another five or 10 minutes if we need it. But um, let me think for a second if I have any other questions in the arsenal. Um, yeah, you know what? Why don't we talk about your father for a minute? Uh, I would love to get him on the show at some point, but uh, he's been doing this for forty, for thirty years, forty years. You said. Most, I mean, he started doing a lot of the work before he actually even went to chiropractic school. So, if you include that, a good forty years. Wow. Okay. And uh, does he have a practice over there in Hawaii, or is he he's, just? So right yeah. now, my parents are semi-retired, and my dad he had a full-time practice in. Hawaii, New Hampshire, West Virginia, and Colorado. I grew up in Colorado, so he had a full-time practice there for 20-some years. And now he's kind of part-time seeing patients. So he sees patients, he has an active license in a small office in Hawaii when we're there. And then also when they're back here in Tacoma, um, we work out at the same office. And he has a lot of patients that more fly in or refer to him, things like that. And, you know, he's been doing the work a long time. He doesn't want to see patients full-time, but he never wants to retire. And the two, he mainly does a lot of research and teaching now. So like this coming weekend, we're flying to Denver and teaching a seminar in Denver. We have 53 docs signed up, I think. Wow. And, and um, we're teaching actually at two different applied kinesiology conferences, one in Scotland and then one in Chicago. And then we're teaching our protocol also in London this coming um, 
summer in June. Wow. So I mean, he keeps pretty busy, let's just say. Yeah. And he's working on the back end, kind of sourcing herbs and learning about herbs, researching, and you're yeah. kind of doing all the front end stuff. Yeah. He yeah. Does a, he's, a, he's always the quality control person. That's He's not a business person. He doesn't want to run a business. He just wants to get people better in all honesty. And a lot of the different herbs, I mean, he's had a lot of health issues throughout his life and kind of, you know, coming out with different supreme products and also how his technique that he teaches doctors and helps evolved over the years have always been to help his health issues and you know he still has some stuff going on but he's made so many huge advances over the years and been able to help a lot of people with it so it's worked really well wow very cool yeah somebody was telling me uh i forget who it was but uh they're telling me that he shows up to all the conferences and he's wearing his like earther sandals and like you know totally just just in his like hippie clothes not giving a concern for the world you know <laughs> even though i love that that's how i am too yeah <laughs> patients and shorts and a t-shirt before but generally his style is flip-flops and a hawaiian t-shirt and he's good to go right there <laughs> very cool yeah well do you have uh, anything else that you'd like to to add you can feel free to plug away anything you want to talk about websites or or anything um that the audience would enjoy i mean we covered a lot of stuff in all honesty yeah. i mean with all the products the only two that i kind of want to i'll say real quick yeah that are the three actually one is don shen don shen mm. um, chinese herb it's known as the best chinese cardiac herb it works really well it does three cool things it's a anti um pla it's a platelet aggregate inhibitor so it stops blood clots from forming it's fibrinolytic so it helps to break down blood clots it also increases nitric oxide in the heart so it expands blood vessels so it helps for cardiac issues but also it helps antimicrobials work better because it gets the nutrients, the oxygen to different small capillary beds. So I really like that. Um, Houdinia, that's a new product we have. It's been used in China for a while. A lot of people in the Lyme community say it works well for Bartonella. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then also Bodyguard. For Bodyguard EMFs, just, right? Uh, what, sorry? For EMFs, Bodyguard? Exactly. Yeah. Bodyguard's Chanka Piedra, which actually has been used in South America for kidney stones, gallstones, yeah. things like that. Works really well. But it's funny, like my dad and a friend, they wanted to see if we could find if they could find an herb that would work well for EMFs. And I mean, obviously, lowering your EMF exposure is key. But you know, they were just muscle testing all different kinds of stuff, and they found the Bodyguard worked really well. So like, we've had people that, in addition to B6, that works well also. But we've had people on Bodyguard B6 that are around computers all day long, different EMF exposure, EMR, and it's really been beneficial for, for them by doing that. Is rosemary in that formula? Because I've heard good things about rosemary for EMFs. So, huh, I've actually never heard that. Okay. Um, we have a rosemary product, which is strictly an organic rosemary. Um, rosemary, I mean, it, it's a mild antifungal. There's research, you know, for candida and different things like that. The one, the two things that I like rosemary for is there's been studies showing it actually works similar to metformin with insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So it actually works really well with that. But also it helps, it seems like with people's liver that's overloaded, um, especially for women, their estrogen levels can get too high because their liver can't adequately break down their hormones. And so they can have different hormonal symptoms. And there's different research showing how rosemary can actually help break down estrogen. And so it actually helps for people, women that are overloaded with different hormonal issues. It kind of works for them. And breast cancer and all the, yeah, all the things that I feel like that are happening right now with women are estrogen or plastic related, right? Because plastics are mimicking estrogens in the body. So the uh, over ovarian cysts, you know, my sister just texted me the other day. She said she... You know, she got diagnosed with the P PCOS, I think it's called. But, you know, that's just such a silly diagnosis. It's really just cysts on the ovaries, but they want to make a label for it and, and, you know, and make more money off of it. And yeah. I mean, a lot of it still comes in. You can do things to help with that, but also keep the liver overloaded. Big, one of the biggest causes of liver overload, in addition to chemicals and metals, is fungal issues. If you have a fungus or a candida, it's going to produce benzene and aldehyde. It's going to overload your liver and your liver's going to be stressed, and that's going to make it so you can't do anything with it. So again, it's getting down to those key root issues of foods, of microbes, of detoxing, and so many other things will clear up. It's awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Dr. Leibowitz, thank you very much. I'm going to post links. I'm going to post Amazon links to every supplement that's on Amazon. And uh, if there are any that are not on Amazon, I'll just post a link to your website. Um, I don't even think, 
you, logo on there in all honesty. And then okay. if people have any, um, yeah, everything's available on there. People, I have some blogs, like people are more interested about nightshades. Yeah. They can go to my website, which is drnoalibos.com, and they could read about nightshades or some other issues like that. It just gives a little bit of background information if people are curious about it or fungal issues and the toxins that fungus is to produce. Okay, excellent. And so it's Supreme Nutrition, it's Dr. Noah Leibowitz, and your father is Dr. Michael Leibowitz, correct? That's it, you got it. Okay, and drnoahleibowitz.com. I'll have links to all of this stuff in the information description. And uh, yeah, would love to have you on here again at some point. I'm sure in the next six months, you'll have five, ten more supplements to talk about. So um, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on here. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. All righty.